How can you reduce post-stroke spasticity with crossed cord reflexes? How can you do that effectively? In the work that we have been doing over the last five years with hundreds of post-stroke clients who almost without exception had problems with moving one side of the body, hemiparesis, had problems with spasticity to more or lesser extent depending on the area of the stroke, uh, whether that's more related to the arm, hand or the leg, usually more so in the arm and the hand because the arm and the hand require more control from up here, so if something happens up here it's more affected. What we found out is that stroke and the results of stroke usually in the majority of stroke survivors that have a lesion in the middle cerebral artery that affects the opposite side of the body, um, we have a resultant problem with spasticity. And spasticity is a problem that is significant it often lasting. So it is worth going into this, especially if you understand the research showing how to manage uh, spasticity outside of what is happening, what is common practice. Common practice means that the standard protocols for stroke management do not always include the latest research, the latest insights. What I'm going to share is something we have noticed in hundreds of our stroke clients. Linda, my partner who I do this work with, have noticed after a severe stroke affecting her left stroke side and the first time when I met her one and a half years post-stroke her arm was literally in this position and through the work that I'm sharing with you today she managed to have more free function in her arm and reduce her spasticity significantly uh, more than 50%. This is not one case, this is what we typically see in the clients that we work with. Who are we? Well, as I said, Linda Radestad, my name is Arjan Kuipers. We founded Brain Rehab, Stroke Dot Rehab. And we work with clients from all over the world that suffer from a post-stroke condition, usually clients that have tried everything uh, and have been to the top clinics, already had a lot of help, but they're usually left with resultant arm problems, shoulder problems, balance problems, knee problems, usually problems with the foot and with the ankle, and spasticity control that is not functioning very well or problems with, with controlling the affected side. Today we're talking just about the spasticity part. My background is in clinical neuroscience, in functional neurology. I've been seeing clients for over 30 years with uh, the results of brain injuries whether that's an accident uh, or a stroke. The last six years I've been specializing more and more in stroke, especially after teaming up with Linda, who sort of fought her way back to functioning almost normal after a severe stroke, where she was left in a wheelchair, unable to speak, uh, not much, um, and severe spasticity after a year having had the regular rehabilitation. Linda is the kind of person that comes up with exercise and will research uh, as long as it takes to come up with better ways, out of the box solutions, that's what she did. And when she met me six years ago we teamed up and I showed her how we can use uh, certain reflexes to reduce her spasticity, which she did with relentless training. After four months, she had a significant reduction in her spasticity. 
So what are these secrets? What are these, these tricks to reduce plasticity? Well, there is none. There is not a one trick that cures it all. If someone tells you that, you have to go around them in a white bow. What is common is that when spasticity is too much, when you get uh, pain through it, when you cannot move at all, uh, the common choice of treatment is Botox. And uh, that can be a miracle because then suddenly you can move, but it will only last three to four months and you have to get another shot. So the best option is if you can bypass Botox, that is apart from the allergies that you can develop against Botox. So that is, that is one way. Regular training protocols, um, constraint-induced movement therapy, they can all have a big contribution to managing spasticity better. Resistance training can help as well. Those are regular methods to combat spasticity over the long run. And if you're lucky, you have a therapist that has uh, dealt with a lot of spasticity clients and uh, over time you can manage through those techniques your spasticity. But there are other ways and maybe these ways are even more important if they are added or they are done after you try the regular protocols and uh, that is why we see when, when some of these techniques are applied we get better long-term results, better spasticity management and of course there's no trick where you have a significant reduction within a couple of days. You have to keep applying these principles, you have to put in the repetition, the intensity. So what are the principles about the additional techniques to reduce spasticity? Well, first of all there are so-called crossed cord reflexes. Reflexes, intraspinal cord reflexes that affect how arms move together, how arms and legs move together on the same side crossed to the other side. There's a lot of research showing that training bilateral sides, so training both sides at the same time also after a stroke, have a way better effect on uh, hemiparesis control than training just on one side. It can be used to prime before you do other training, but on their own they can be very effective. What happens is that muscle tone is regulated at a cord level, at a brainstem level, especially the reticulospinal extrapyramidal systems have a big effect on this and we have a suprasegmental interhemispheric control that I'm going to talk about in the last in point three today. So crossed cord reflexes using both sides, especially when we use it in a quadrupedal way, for example with isoclam exercises, cyclical uh, uh, rhythmic movements, we can add sound. Sound we know has a big effect on the reticular formation, on the pontomodulary areas in the brainstem where we find the reticulospinal tracts. We know that reticulospinal tracts have a up and down regulatory effect when you're moving in a, uh, you have locomotion, when you move like for example with crawling, with, with walking. So that's a very smart way to use these so-called crossed cord reflexes, the cross cord, uh, and have the cross cord effect through these interneurons, the uh, interplay uh, of the reflexes, the stretch reflexes, the withdrawal reflexes, the step reflex that are built into the spinal cord. So that is secret number one. And we know from experience with all of our clients, we know from the research that that is a very smart way to try to control the spasticity because these levels, brainstem, pontomodulary area, spinal cord, they are still intact. But if you don't use these specific exercises, you will not address the up and down regulation of muscle tone through these areas. So 
So this is one. So number two, what is very important is that um, you have to know where your body is in space. To regulate muscle tone, which usually takes place through the corticospinal tracts that are affected by the stroke, you need feedback from the body. You need sensory information. The, the brain has to know where the body is in space to have a proper effect on the muscle tone. So one of the things, the extrapyramidal system, the system outside of the corticospinal pyramidal system, um, incorporates basal ganglia, cerebellum, it uh, incorporates the sensory feedback from body movements and if we look closely at most of our post-stroke clients, we see that this sensory feedback the awareness of where the body is in space, where body parts are in space and movement information through the spasticity that doesn't come back properly, we see that this has an enhancing effect on the uh, spasticity post-stroke and the inability to use this site. So we have to make sure that whatever you're doing, whether you're combining it with bilateral movement, quadrupedal movement, you have to add a sensory input, whether that is vibration, electromuscular stimulation. Um, we know in the literature there's a lot of evidence that this greatly enhances the effect, for example, on muscle tone. So that's component two that is like sort of a secret to managing spasticity better or to reduce spasticity over time in a better way. Now the third component is an interesting one. Um, if you look at the research, uh, especially the cyclical motion research and the bilateral movement therapy, different bilateral movement therapies, we see that the pericolosal activity is a very important one, alternating on and off inhibition, disinhibition of the two hemispheres plays a huge role in the possibility of having an effect, a regulatory effect, from the suprasegmental areas. So what do we mean by that? After stroke we know we often have a period where we have some depressed, um, unaffected site function. And after that we see often an upregulation of the good functioning and that is then usually on the site that is affected in the body, opposite of the affected brain part. And we see that the affected side of the brain gets inhibited. Now, when you alternate movement, whether that is crossing the midline, whether that is alternating movement, bilateral movement, using quadrupedal movement, we have a inhibition, disinhibition, inhibition, disinhibition, and we see we uninhibit the affected brain parts better and we see that the areas around it including the supplementary motor areas the premotor areas get disinhibited inhibited inhibited and can exert through the corticospinal tracts or related extrapyramidal tracts can up and down regulate muscle tone better it's not such things that losing spasticity completely, but the up and down regulation, the controlling while you are moving, even if there's increased tone, is improved. So, in this video, we just covered three very important uh, aspects of spasticity management, spasticity reduction. If you incorporate these uh, techniques into your present rehabilitation protocols, you'll see that you have more effect on reducing spasticity long term. It did not just work with our clients and with Linda, we see this back in the research as well. If you want to find out more, you just look at uh, the comments that our clients left or their testimonials and you look at uh, the articles that we left on our site and check out the references and look up the research for yourself. So we covered the crossed cord reflex, the crossed cord reflexes in the spine on the spinal cord and in 
at the brainstem level, the reticulospinal level, how they interact when you bilaterally move, you have quadrupedal movement. We saw that the, the sensory feedback to the brain is crucial for top-down control, up and down regulation of muscle tone. It's often not incorporated enough. If you add it to other exercise protocols, you have a lot a more significant effect. And we have talked about the pericolosal effect uh, or cross-colosal effect with, uh, with the other nice word where we have the dis inhibition inhibition when we have alternate movement when we are crossing the midline and we make it possible that we have the top down up and down regulation of muscle control more under control so if you incorporate these techniques you will see that spasticity is significantly reduced uh, of course there's no such thing as a smart trick that will have a uh, effect after one week you have to put in the repetition and the intensity to establish these effects that's it for this video in the next video we will also talk how we can get the foot moving even if no movement was possible and how we can stabilize the ankle so inversion doesn't take place and your clients can start using their feet their foot, their affected foot and ankle in a better way and eventually lead up to losing their brace and be able to use the foot without support and relearn walking better. That's for the next video. Hope this was interesting for you. Uh, until the next video. Bye.